So now we'll move on to the hip exam. And once again, to do this properly, we're going to need to remove the diaper entirely so that we can both look and feel properly. And we have a nice bowel movement here to show that our anus is indeed patent. And so we'll do a quick cleaning of that. And we're in good shape. So first we're going to look at symmetry. And we're going to look at her skin folds, her gluteal skin folds right in here look pretty symmetric. It's not a particularly sensitive or specific sign, but if you saw a significant asymmetry there, you'd be more suspicious about a congenital dysplasia of the hip. So we've examined her skin folds, and now we're going to check her abduction and range of motion of her hips. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and fully abduct her hips as far as we can comfortably and see what kind of range of motion she has. And she abducts pretty much to the table without difficulty or resistance. You want to do that slowly, because if you do it too quickly, they'll resist just because you're doing it quickly. Then we'll fully adduct her hips again and perform our Ortolani maneuver. That consists of, with your fingers on the greater trochanter and your hands controlling both legs, fully abducting, feeling for an acetabulum and head of the femur kind of coming together and clunking or clicking back into joint. So it would be a dislocated hip that you're actually putting back into place by abducting it. And I don't feel any such click or clunk. Then the other thing we're going to do one hip at a time is the Barlow maneuver. And that is we'll do it on her left hip first with my hand in the same position and my middle finger, that's the finger I use, uh, on her greater trochanter. We're going to stress this hip posterior, superiorly, and laterally in an effort to try to bring it in and out of the joint, in and out of the acetabulum, and see if there's any motion there. So I'm moving it, but I'm also stressing it superior, posterior, and laterally, and she's nice and stable on the left. And we'll repeat it on the right side with the left kind of stabilized now. And again, we're stressing this superiorly, laterally and posteriorly and she's also nice and stable here and as you can see she didn't enjoy that part of the exam which is why we've saved it towards the last so I'll re-diaper her now that she's got nice normal hips to her head. Now once again we've done some observing previously and she has a nice normally shaped head. Again this baby is about 28 hours old. She might have had a little bit more molding of her head from the birth process although she was a c-section baby and they don't have, tend to have much molding. Uh, so she's got a nice round sort of normally shaped looking head. No obvious lesions in terms of scalp wounds or abnormal skin lesions or abnormal hair on her scalp. We're also going to feel her sutures to see if they're either widely split or overriding, but hers feel nice and normal. And we're also going to assess her fontanelles. Anterior fontanelle for her is about a centimeter and a half by a centimeter and a half and is pretty flat. And her posterior fontanelle back here by the occiput is closed. Some infants will have an open posterior fontanelle at this age at birth, but most do not. So her head appears normal. We're going to look at her eyes now. And again, frequently, particularly if you've gotten them a little upset, they're not going to be opening their eyes very comfortably or easily. And so sometimes you need to shade their eyes a little bit so the light's not quite so bright in their eyes, and sometimes that'll stimulate them to open them a little bit which she does nicely. We're looking at the present time for some conjugate gaze, which she mostly has, but they sometimes will have some esotropia or exotropia that is normal at this age, not an uncommon circumstance. You can see she's interested in looking around when the bright light's not shining in her face. Sometimes another way to get them to open their eyes if they're being a little bit less than cooperative is just to tip them up a little bit. But she's not liking it all, so we're not going to continue to do that. But uh, 
And so what we're looking for in the sclera here is any kind of discoloration like icterus or any hemorrhage or any other kind of redness from inflammation. And so we do have to kind of open this and look at the palpebral conjunctiva as well. And on both sides, things look nice and normal. We're also doing our best to assess her pupil, which as we open each eye does constrict very briskly. And so a pupillary response to light is nice and normal. Another important step for us in the eye exam at this age is to generate a red reflex with the ophthalmoscope. We're looking for a normal red to orange color. And typically we would do this again more in the dark, but uh, because of the cameras here, I think we'll just uh, do our best in the light. And we'll try and shade our eye a little bit. Usually our, I'm gonna keep it on about zero diopters and a, full, and a distance about 10 inches or so. Should be able to get you your red reflex. And I'm seeing it just fine on the right. And we'll come around and do the left side as well because your retinal abnormalities can be unilateral, so we want to make sure we check both eyes. So we're going to shade you again here, my friend. You want to look this way, though, don't you? That's better. And we're going to also, again, try about 10 inches or so. We can get her to open her eye. There you go. And now we indeed have a red reflex on the left as well. So her red reflexes are nice and normal on both sides also. I did not see any evidence of cataract, although again, with the bright lights and sort of constricted pupils, I could certainly miss a small one under those circumstances. Next, we're gonna move on to her ear exam. And once again, our first step is observation. And so we're going to look for any kind of abnormal position. Usually we want the top of the oracle to be at least even with the outer canthal fold. And hers are nice and normally positioned on both sides, right and left. So no abnormal position. We're also looking for any kind of pits or tags that might indicate internal structural problems or hearing difficulties. Those are also associated with kidney abnormalities frequently, and she has no abnormal structures on the outside. So from an external perspective, everything looks nice and normal. And now we'll do an otoscopic exam, which is a little less uh, extensive in a newborn because frequently their external auditory canal is filled with vernix and you can't see the ear, uh, the tympanic membrane very well anyway. But we're gonna do our best and see if it's at least patent. Newborn ear canals tend to angle a little bit from the inside upward, and so actually, unlike for adults where you might pull the ear a little bit posterior and superior, for infants, you're usually better off pulling the ear a little bit straight down. And again, we're going to carefully, first we're going to turn on our otoscope, we're going to carefully pull this down, and without being too aggressive, look to see if we can see intimate matter ring, which we can not have a whole lot of vernix in our auditory canal. Light reflex in this age group is usually not nearly as much of a triangular cone of light. It's more of a diffuse light reflex in this age group. And that's what hers demonstrates here. No abnormal masses or structures either in the external auditory canal or her tympanic membrane. And I can see all the way to this one as well. So we're lucky today. And typically, we don't get much satisfaction out of pneumatic otoscopy in this age group because their drums don't move very well at this point anyway. Next, we're going to focus on the nose. Again, we're going to look at structure to see if there's any abnormalities and, or deformities in terms of like a flattened nasal bridge. Hers is quite normal looking or deviated septum that you can see from the outside. We're also going to try to demonstrate that she can move air through her nares by occluding one at a time. And she is able to move air, although she's not too pleased about it. And now we'll do occlude the right side. And she's able to move air through the left as well. So she's got patent nares. 
If you were suspicious of that, you would want to pass a feeding tube to see if indeed there was some coenal atresia, but she looks good there. Next, we're going to focus on her mouth, and once again, external observation. We're going to take a look at her philtrum and her vermilion border to make sure they're not abnormal in appearance. She has a normal philtrum, the two little lines that kind of come down from the nose there. The absence of the philtrum might be indi indicative of fetal alcohol syndrome, or a thin vermilion border might also be associated with that. We can also see those with other chromosomal abnormalities. And we're also going to go ahead and take a tongue blade and take a little look inside. And we're going to view her tongue for size and position and mobility. And so first we're just going to kind of look at her gingiva on the outside, lower and upper. And they look normal. We're also looking for any natal teeth, which I don't know if you'll be able to pick up on the camera here, but her gums look nice and normal, and I'm not seeing any natal teeth there whatsoever. Buccal mucosa also looks normal on the right and on the left. And then we're going to do one fast look in and gag her here. And she does have a few Epstein pearls on her joint uh, junction between her soft and hard palate, which are just some uh, whitish inclusions that uh, will disappear with time. Again, hard to demonstrate, uh, I think, for the camera, but you look for those uh, when you're checking in the mouth. We're also looking for the arching of the palate, whether it was too high or whether there's any cleft there, and hers looked very nice and normal. Next, we're going to move on to her neck. Once again, observation-wise, we're going to look for any masses or any pits or clefts. And we do have to kind of move the skin around to be able to see everything appropriately. We're particularly also looking for thyromegaly. And then we'll palpate her neck for any masses. We usually are not going to see lymphadenopathy in this age group. It'd be very uncommon. So if you felt a mass, it's generally something else. And then last but not least, we're also going to palpate her clavicles to make sure there's no fracture, that we can feel an ununited clavicle or any feel any crepitus. And hers feel nice and symmetric and normal both sides and do not seem to be tender. And we're going to check her neck for range of motion, looking for any torticollis. And she has nice normal range of motion and full rotation in both directions. And so from top to bottom, this is a very nice, normal, healthy looking baby with no abnormal findings who didn't enjoy our exam very much, but I think we got through it okay.